Hey, it's Jarkin. And now I'll be, I literally just finished the second book to the series. I told you the next um, um, video about the Second Jarkin trilogy will be coming soon once I finish it. And I just finished it. I probably, today was one of my days off for the week of work and I just finished the second half of the book maybe a little bit more because I just I could not put it down I mean I read it before that was only once and I just I was reading most of the day I mean I did get interrupted a few times you know so it, it took a little longer than it was supposed to plus I did videos early today and I had other things I had to do like clean and stuff but I but whenever whenever I had time I could so I don't want to spoil too much, but this is going to be kind of like a review. So I hope you've read it, and if not, you will get spoilers. I won't spoil too much. Um, the major things, at least. By the beginning, Ali's with Mikey, and they become close. It's been three years since Ali and Nick have died, and they are apart from each other now. Ali's ventures with Mikey, which you don't even get to see their Mikey for several first few chapters because the first yeah chapter four, four is the first one you see about them first three chapters are about Nick and Mary Nick in Everlast only one person in all of Everlast can actually change their form to what they want Everlast you become who you are you, what no you become what you remember about yourself all Nick could remember was the chocolate stain, so he became the chocolate ogre. He was becoming chocolate. And um, they, he was in a feud with Mary. They were trying to... Um, Nick, Mary, uh, uh, Mary was trying to keep the kids there, and Nick was trying to save them. Um, bring them back to the hereafter, where they're supposed to be going. Um... Allie's and Mikey, uh, so Nick end up teaming up with Johnny O, nonetheless, considering him and Allie did not have, not exactly along with him at first, even though there was a, an alliance between him and Allie at some point in the middle of the first book, this time he has an alliance with Nick, and he actually trusts Nick now, even though they're alliance. It mentions how they became aligned, and it was not simple at all, but they eventually did started to trust each other and I think Johnny O became Nick's most he might not be the smartest person in Nick's little team but he's probably the most trusted because they have been through a lot together I guess you can say but he had also met Charlie who had joined their forces um Allie while Nick and Mary were both preparing for war getting armies together to fight one another even though they still have feelings for each other um, Ali was a finder and she had decided to meet her family, to see her family, to see if, to see how they were. <coughs> but turned out they moved, so she had to find a new way to find them. So Harry and Mikey continued on when she, uh, when they made um, Milo, Squirrel, and Moose. Squirrel and Moose, I don't really have any feelings towards. Milo's, I I never trusted. And I never liked him. He was always just that too cool, too suave. There was definitely, he had definitely had things up, plans up his sleeve. Um, and because of Milo's, Mikey, Milo starts teaching Allie how to skin jack. And, or better skin jack. Like, things she didn't even know she could do. Like, soul surf, where you surf, where, like, there's a crowd, in a crowd of people, you can go from one to another without actually possessing them just kind of jumping off of them to get to places faster and um and she, um she learns other things she didn't know she could do and th while that's happening nick meets Sinia, who everyone thought was a boy and because th there's been stories of zach the ripper um who um the ripper could um get things out, see, 
There's a lot of people with their own special power and never lost their skin jackers. Then Mikey's the only person in the world who can actually choose who he, how he transform, what he transforms into. And then Zinnia can um, reach into the living world and pull it into Everlost. And later on, she thanks to Nick, she learns that she can also pull things back into the living world. Which it was a key point for the end of the story. Or the end of this book, at least. There's still a third one that I need to read. Which I've read before, but like I said, it's been forever. I just, like, there's just so much I don't remember. Um, so, um... They end up getting an alliance. It was not easy, an alliance, but Nick and Zinnia. Zinnia joins the team and immediately her and Johnny O disliked, which I kind of thought they would make a cute couple. Probably will never happen because of things that happen later in the later book. Later of this book. But, um... Because of Milo's, Mike, Milo's was, Mikey was jealous, obviously, he realized he was starting to get feelings for Allie and that scared him. And Allie realized her feelings for Mikey, but didn't exactly know what they were. Um, because it's different in Everlost than the Living World. But, in a way, it's better. It's kind of hard to explain, you'll have to read about it to figure it out. But, um... Um, so, Milo's and Ali had skinjacked a couple at a party, and, um, Milo's, how do I put this, um, kind of took advantage of her. She was in a fleshy who was up in love with the boy that Milo's had skinjacked, and feelings had surfed, and when they, um, and then they kiss once, just as Mikey saw, and he kind of ran, transformed himself into something hideous, and screamed into nothing as he left, which broke Allie's heart because she w she insisted on waiting day after day for him to return. But when he didn't, she finally realized that she had to go find her family at the in Memphis. But no one could go past the, no um, afterlight can go into the past Mississippi River because there's a strong wind, a vortex that stops them. I'll get more into the vortex later. But, um, Allie, um, eventually does meet her family. Doesn't go exactly as she planned, but she does learn stuff towards the end of the book. She learns that skin jackers are alive. And, um,. That's why they can skin jack. They have a hold in the living world. And, um, they can, um, they're in comas, basically. There's no, that's why they can't take the coin. The coin, it gets cold? No. I think it gets warm when you set it on your palm and close your fist and then the tunnel comes there's no escaping that that's why if you don't want to move on you do not touch the coin but skin jackers on the other hand they um they can't move on because they're not dead I mean so um Allie does get stuck in a situation after she she, she had parted from Milo's Moose and Squirrel and then Mikey left so she had no idea where he was and she was all alone and she got a situation where she was skin jacking this boy to try and talk to her family um, she never wanted to skin jack a little boy she always wanted to use her powers for good and good only or when it was absolutely necessary because possessing people is wrong right but um, that was she even knew that was the lowest point but she was going through a lot and so she skin jacked a 7 year old boy to try and um, talk to, um, her family. She didn't get to see her sister because her sister was already off in college. It's been three years. And she found out that her father was alive from the car crash. 
though he was missing an arm and he had a scar on his forehead on, on, and on one of his cheeks. So the crash was bad. And then um, the she, as the boy was talking about how they must be sad that they lost their daughter, she didn't want to pry too much because she realized she was might be overstepping her bounds. But they said it was all right. And that's when they, when he was saying how she was trying to give them closure. So how she, he, so and the boy, she was trying to say how, um, oh he was. Um, Uh, death is never goodbye and stuff and he shoot and then that's when their parents were like oh she's not dead she's in a coma and he was and then Ali was like what I'm not dead I mean she didn't actually say that but those were thoughts rest in her mind like she thought she was dead she but now so much things made sense it made sense why she could skin jack it made sense why she can't cross over no matter what she does because she's not actually dead you know I mean all the the majority of ever lost people in ever lost they either can't move on because they're being trapped by like Mary or something or they're just not ready to move on with Ali she can't move on because she's not dead so um so finally she had to so finally she gave the boy back and well she she couldn't that's what the situation she was in she was in him for way too long and she could not escape finally she got out because of milo's decisive deceitful ways when he fi she finally runs into him again and um he almost gets the boy killed i'm not gonna say too much about that because i probably always spoiled something big but that had me in eye shocker i was like what milo's come on i mean i knew i didn't like Ali, but that was different like different but anyways um when they found her they thought she was us uh, jack and jill who had run off from them who was in relationship with milo's and they wanted to get her back um that's why they were following her at first when they her and mikey first met him met them the three of them um but uh Miles had all these reasons. Hey, why could we skin jacket? We shouldn't use it. And they use it for bad reasons, you know. And Ali's curiosity got the best of her. Mikey never trusted him, but that was a little bit of jealousy. But, um. Nick was, as this was all going down, Nick was losing himself. Chaka was taking over. But he found out where. Ali was headed, so he ran to find her. Cause if he had a Ripper and a skin jacker, there's no way he would lose against uh, uh, Mary, right? And besides, he really missed his old friend and had to find her. You know, I mean, and it's like they were born and ever lost together. So when he got close, he knew that she was in Mem. When they got to Memphis, she he he knew she was there. She he could she could feel it. Ali would have been able to feel him too if she wasn't trapped inside a living person because she couldn't see ever lost or feel it or anything she knew it was there obviously but her and the boy were starting to become one and it was scary for both of them but um nick was looking for her when finally he gets a note from mary saying to meet in the vortex and he agrees and he only takes zinnia because they had this whole plan i'm not gonna get tell you what the plan was because uh i want you to be super surprised when it happens but ali ends up having to uh run from Milo's they, and eventually gets caught by um, some of Mikey's newest minions and he he told her how he saw them kissing and how he and they have a confrontation which didn't go any way Mikey thought he told her he loved her and placed a coin in her hand he didn't he thought that would be the end of it he would never see Ali again he thought she was gonna move on but then she was like, I have a lot to need to tell you. Um, and then he was like, she was like, um, I love you. Or she told him she loved him or something. And he was like, uh, you love Milo's. And he, she was like, um, show me your worst and I will prove I love you. So he brought out his most hideous face and his hideous body. He can morph and he did that. And what she did was she breached her hands through the bars of her cage and kissed him. I know I'm probably spoiling a little bit too much, but this was absolutely my favorite chapter in this book because I was like, oh, it was so sweet. That's definitely the main romance on here. Um, I don't read books for the romance. 
even if I do love the romances they show. Um, you know, I read it for the action and the adventure and the mystery and the plot twist and the um, characters um, and the friendships. I mean, the main friendship on here is Allie and Nick, even if they were separated for quite some time. Um, absolutely love them. And, uh, but I do absolutely love Allie and Mikey together. And I love how that she didn't flinch, she didn't look away. She just grabs him and kisses him because it didn't disgust him because she knows that it's him. You know, he is the human and he is the monster. He's all of it and she loves every bit of it. And I love it and I love their relationship. It's just so adorable how she could see past his flaws and how he managed to fall for her because she, most people were terrified of him, she wasn't. You know, I mean, yeah, maybe she was disgusted by him at first, even if she didn't show it. But she was brave, and she faced him, and she told him down, talked him down. And and I guess he just loved how she didn't shy away from him, not just by his look, but by his personality. She wasn't afraid to call him out on something. And I think that's why they both fell for each other. And it was just so adorable. And when she kisses him... And I had to shut the book for it. I was like, oh, this just, it just, it's Allie and Mikey, you know? It's definitely my favorite ship on here, no doubt. Um, but, um, it was just so sweet. And, um, and, um, Mikey transformed back into his human self after the kiss. And, um, Allie told him how she needed to go to save Nick to, or to help him because now that she's in her she could feel him and feel how dangerous he is and um, she had to see him but she was too late. I'm not going to give too much into that just say she wasn't in time to save him and they were able to stop Mary for now not forever. And because Mary, because the epilogue is about Mary and Milo's and how their plans are working. And they were able to assassinate a bridge killing millions so that more souls are never lost. Because Mary's a psychopath. But, um, and Milo's a psychopath now too. Or a sociopath. He's something. Like, seriously? But, um, it's just messed up. Like, seriously. But, um, Allie was kidnapped by Milo, and Mikey blamed himself because if he hadn't captured her and confronted her, she would have been in time to save Nick and stop Mary, Milo, and everyone. So Mikey, Mikey was able to save Nick, sort of, and he's starting to become like his own, his own self. He's starting to remember, which is something big. Um, and Mikey's goal... Or the vortex, right? It changes you, and it makes changes you like bad. But um, Nick had won and lost at the same time. He got what he wanted on Mary, but he didn't get to live enough, long enough to see it. Or he doesn't die. It's hard to explain without giving a spoiler, and I don't really want to give too much spoilers. Mikey was able to save him at the end in the last chapter. Well, last chapter, well, the epilogue is about Mary and Milo's, but ma mainly Mary. But the chapter 4, chapter 40, is about Mikey saving, becoming a monster enough, strong enough to save Allie, because he blamed himself, and he has one goal, to save Allie. And he also saved Nick, and it's starting to get him to be his old, his old self again, so the two of them can set out. And... But they can't cross the river. But Mikey had a plan. I'm not going to tell you what the plan was. Because I want you to be shocked when you read it. So please read this book. Because it's awesome. That was book two. I spoiled some. But didn't spoil the major plot, plot twists. And things that happened. So that I'm okay with that. And then I'm going to start the third books pretty soon. And after I'm done with that. I will give you some synopsis of that. Okay. Thank you for watching. Uh, please uh, like and subscribe and comment whether you like this book, what's your favorite things of it, how you felt about Allie and Mikey, or Allie and Nick's friendship, or just anything ever wild about Everwild, the second book of the Skin Jagger trilogy. 
That's all. I'll see you next time.